This video is rated T or Tickle Me Pink. Are you interested in what the best weapons are that you can run at level 2 traders? Well, you came to the right place. My name is Tickle Me Pink. I have 9,000 hours in Tarkov. I'm a turbo fucking loser, and I know the mathematically correct builds you should be using at level 2 traders. So I'm going to have five different builds for you guys, and the reason for that is we want to look for different price points, different weapons that shine in different engagements. We're going to have some long range, some medium range, some short range, suppressed, unsuppressed, as well as different calibers to choose from. Now, why are we aiming to do this with level two traders? Well, it'll just make your build much more cost efficient. You're going to be spending maybe like 150K for a build, 100K for a build. Instead of if you were to flee something, maybe you fleed and got a Sig Spear, that'd be 500K. That's a little bit more of an extreme side. But this is just going to be a more cost efficient approach to running really good weapons early on. You could consider this like a follow up to my best kit to run on Tarkov. If you haven't seen that already, I'll have that in the top right. You could watch that first and then come back to this if you'd like. Additionally, so thank you for making it to the end of the video. I'm going to show you guys a weapon that people do not know actually has lower recoil than all its other variations that makes it significantly stronger. But I'll shut the fuck up and get into the weapon builds. Our first weapon is the G36. Yeah, I know that seems kind of weird. Historically, the G36 has not really been a go to weapon. It was kind of like a Frankenstein early level weapon that no one really used. But with 5.56 not really kicking very much and the changes to recoil, the G36 has something that most weapons in Tarkov don't have and that is burst fire look at these groupings right here you're gonna aim at the upper chest to head area and burst fire this rifle and people will drop like flies i shit you not combine that with a cheap purchase point easy to access suppressors and a fully automatic function that you could back up on up close this works great on shoreline great on customs it's really a jack of all trades and that's why i want to start this video with this build it's also unique you're gonna have a lot of fun using it now the hk g36c is available from peacekeeper level 2 for 487 dollars sometimes you'll find the v2 variation of this rifle which has slightly less recoil and a different stock on it and slightly longer barrel on the flea market for less than that so just keep your eyes out but you can readily find this on peacekeeper level 2. in terms of what ammunition we're we'll going to be running through this thing i would recommend you run green tip 855 and then if you can find any other high tier ammunitions in boxes go ahead and use that as well but green tip has been working surprisingly well this wipe it just gets past those plates and puts people down insanely fast then you also have its accuracy statistic its lack of recoil and its muzzle velocity and you're gonna quickly fall in love with 556 this wipe all right now that you have your standard g36 we're gonna start modding this bad boy first things first we're gonna go ahead and change out the stock this is actually the v2 version of the stock it's super cheap and it's gonna give us basically free recoil control skill and free ergonomics when i say free i mean it's like pennies on the dollar for the stats we're getting and you can just sell the old stock after that we're going to go ahead and slot on an rk4 foregrip from skier level 2 it's one of the best grips we can get at a level 2 trader standpoint and gives us once again good recoil good ergo for the price point after that we're going to want to go ahead and slot in the war comp surefire muzzle brake this is going to allow us to get a suppressor on this now you have a few different suppressor options that thread onto that muzzle brake. However, I'm going to recommend you guys run the mini, but you can also just run whatever one is the cheapest. The reason we're going to run the mini is it only has like two points less of recoil control skill, but significantly higher ergo. And because we're going to be using this a lot in a mid range engagements, we want to be able to snap our rifle up very fast. So this is built to be light. It's short barrel and built to have a lot of ergonomics. So you get first shots on target and you win firefights more often. But if the price of the suppressor goes up a lot, like right now it's only 30k, sometimes I find out for 25k on the flea, then you can go ahead and slot in the other suppressors and it will make a giant difference. Then we're going to go ahead and remove the iron sights, the front and rear iron sights. Finally, we're going to slot on an optic. Now, I personally really enjoy the flip up EOTech. I know this is an unpopular opinion. You can go ahead and slot on whatever optic you think is best. A Monstrum would work really well here, an ACOG would work really well here. The Bravo optic would work well here, and there's a barter trade to get it. The flip up holographic sight is really nice. It gives you the best of both worlds. I mean, you're playing mid range, so a 3x optic flip up works pretty well, and having the 1x up close works really well again. I really do not like shooting through like full on scopes in the 1x format. That's just me. So go ahead and put your optic of choice on this build. And then finally, go ahead and slap your flashlight or laser of choice. I would go ahead and put it on the right hand side of the rifle. You see, I have it on the left here, just for the sake of showing you in the video. I use a Balder Pro as it blinds a lot, but the choice is yours. And here we have our completed G36. 
If you want a screenshot of this full G36 build, just go ahead and join my Discord and go in the weapons build channel or go to my Twitch and type exclamation point level 2 G36 just as you see it on screen right now and there'll be a nice little info card there for you with the price sheet as well as the build. If you appreciate the time it takes to test all the new weapons and all these new variations like using a burst fire G36 to really shine in the early game, then go ahead and tell me to kill myself in the comments down below and smash the dislike button on this video. I'd appreciate it guys. Alright, for those of you guys that just still aren't sold on Burst Fire, even with the recent changes to Recoil making it extremely manageable and giving you super tight groupings, I have a DMR that's super cost efficient and also drops people like no one's business. And that's the SKS. We haven't seen the SKS really be that viable as a weapon for like three or four years. Like sure, you could get some kills with it, but it really shines right now. Additionally, we can get 762 PS as well as 762 PP on the flea market which bypasses through level 4 and level 5 plates quite a lot and just the sheer flesh damage on this ammunition really hurts even if you, you can tap someone in the leg break their leg and then finish them off at distance this rifle feels great guys so let's hop into this sks build and it all starts with this barter from mechanic level 2 for three weapon parts it'll give you the uas sks which comes with an amazing chassis and stock already installed on it you're getting this for around 40 to 50k depending on the price of weapon parts and it's a phenomenal starting platform all right now that you have your opsks with the uas modifications already on it let's go ahead and start modifying this bad boy the first adjustment i want to talk about is going ahead and putting on the sks thread adapter and then you can choose to either run a dtk as a muzzle brake and you're gonna be running this loud and it'll be you know significantly cheaper to run this way or you can go ahead and run it with a hexagon SKS suppressor and no adapter. Just think about where you're going. You know, if you're going at nighttime, let's say nighttime air change, you don't want to have your muzzle flashes. It'd be wise to run a suppressor, right? If you're going to be sticking on the outside of resort on shoreline trying to get some scav kills, then it'd be wise to run a suppressor, right? But if you're going to be using this more as like a battle rifle, getting up close and personal people, maybe you're going to take this to customs, or you're going to get really aggressive with it on woods then you'd be fine running it with a DTK. So just go ahead and use whatever case use you think is more valuable. After that, we're just gonna go ahead and remove the rear sight and then slap a laser on it. Once again, I like to go with the balder here. Now, I think the laser is even more important on this weapon right here, just due to the fact that you're gonna be in a position where if someone gets really close to you, you are gonna be at a disadvantage and being able to blind them will really help you even out that playing field if they have a fully automatic rifle. After that, we're gonna go ahead and slot in 20 round magazines. You can get these from Peacekeeper fairly early on. You can also put 35 round magazines in it, but it's gonna make the weapon heavier and lower the ergo, which is gonna kind of defeat the purpose of getting shots on target at range faster, but it might help you in close range quarters. So just like the suppressor and the muzzle brake, you could choose to run 35 rounds if you're gonna get really close and personal with this rifle. And then last, to keep this weapon nice and cheap, we're just gonna go ahead and slot a PSO on it. A PSO is a 4X optic, it has, it's a pretty clean reticle. I would recommend you go ahead and slot it into the, the red reticle format and you'll very quickly be putting people down and this will quickly become one of your favorite low level DMRs guys. Once again, this weapon will be available in my discord in the weapon build channel or on my Twitch just type level 2 SKS build and we'll have the full build sheet, the mod sheet and how much it costs for you guys. Up next for those of you guys that love full automatic 556 and have free fallen in love with M4s to swipe with ground zero and the changes to recoil control. We have a very modded M4. It is a little bit more expensive, but it is a jack of all trades. The high rate of fire in the 5.56 feels phenomenal. So if you're running in a party already, you have a really high survival rate. You're gonna be able to afford this no problem, and it should make light work of anyone you run into. That being said, if you've been playing Tarkov solo, feel free to join my Discord. I'll play with you. There's a lot of cool people to play games with. That'll up your survival rate. Go ahead, save you money and make you more money. It's a no brainer. Hop in Discord, it'll be linked in the description down below. Now, you can actually purchase the M4 as low as level one Peacekeeper. All you need is three CPUs and a CPU fan. This makes this build effectively dirt cheap. I mean, we're talking like 40K to buy this build outright. If you were to buy it with dollars, it goes for around $700, which is around, I think, 85,000 rubles. So I'd strongly suggest you guys do the trade instead. And you also find them all over. If you still have access to Ground Zero, I mean, you can just go to Ground Zero and just pluck them from some new players. It sounds kind of like a dick move, but I mean, if you're out of money, you're out of money. That's how this game works. Once we have this back to our stash, we're just going to go ahead and swap out the hand grip for the MOE SL that's sold by Skier. Super cheap hand grip. Not much else to say. It gives really good statistics. It looks kind of funny with the tan on the full black gun, but another thing we're able to do with this build is we have access to a lot of really good parts that are also tan. So we're going to go ahead and mill sim it out a little bit. We're going to go ahead and swap on the MK12 low profile gas block. 
going ahead and getting rid of that riser all the way at the end so we're not lollipopping after that we're gonna go ahead and remove the carry handle so we can set ourselves up for a new optic at the other end of the barrel we're gonna go ahead and slot that same war comp compensator we're actually gonna use the tan suppressor that goes along with that muzzle brake reason for this is that actually i mean it's tan so it's cool but then also it gives the most recoil control stat and then once again this is only going for 30k too so if you want a little bit more ergo you can slot that mini that we had on the g36 as well but with the m4 because you're gonna be shooting it in the full auto variation much more than you would with the g36 you're not gonna really be tapping the m4 quite as much i would recommend you guys go for more recoil control with this build that's what we look to achieve with this build up next we're going to slot in the daniel defense m lock it's like a new forward like potato style grip has really good stats and you unlock it early on afterwards of course we're gonna go ahead and slot on our rail as well as our balder a balder actually comes in tan as well and i've got i've spurred out a little bit on this but it's fun to have a tan weapon i would love to see bsg actually make it so you could get like all sorts of different colored um attachments or maybe you can color them yourselves or maybe drape like gilly or something over your rifle that would be really really cool i give it that arma 2 vibe now we're not also just going for these parts because they're tan we're going for these parts because they're the best parts that are available but it's just ironic that they also do come in tan and on that token we're going to go for the m1 ad ar15 pistol grip that comes in fde gives the best stats you can get with level 2 traders and once again it's tan i also like to run the gen m3 windowed magazines you can actually see how much ammo is in them by looking through the window either in your inventory or in the gun itself and that way you're not checking your magazines you can easily know which one you need to load which one you need to top off faster it's really really nice it's just you guys do it they also have stat bonuses to help you pack your magazines faster which is going to get you moving after engagement so use these windowed magazines they're super powerful and a lot of people sleep on windowed magazines afterwards we're going to go ahead and slot on the ds150 chris defiance stock it comes in can it's also the best stock we can get at this level and then again, for me personally, I like the flip up holographic site. It comes in 10 as well. It looks sick. If you want to take this build to the next level, you could see if you can find yourself like a Mer 15 upper receiver. But that's a little bit more of like advanced modding. You have to really take everything off of this and change out the receiver. You'll get lower recoil control. But this is your completed M4 for level two traders. And it's pretty decked out, all things considered. It feels really good. I really enjoyed using this. And it might be a staple for me for the rest of the way. Once again, if you want to find this full weapon build as well as the parts list for it, go ahead and type level 2 M4 in my Twitch chat. It'll be linked in the description down below. And let's hop on to the next rifle. For those of you that want a fully automatic rifle but prefer like 7.62, instead we're going to be using the AKM now. The M4 shines a little bit more in mid-range and tapping. However, the AKM absolutely annihilates up close. And with the 5.56, we need to make sure you're aiming kind of in the upper chest area, catching neck, catching collarbone, etc. The AKM, you can really just get this thing on target and let it rip. 7.62 is just hitting really hard right now. The changes to PS, making it so it can go through level 4 armor and being able to buy PP ammunition from the flea market as well, which goes through level 5 armor, makes this a force to be reckoned with. And you can actually build a pretty strong AKM with level 2 traders that's very manageable to use with the recoil changes. So let's hop into that now you can actually get the akm at level two proper for 43,000 rubles you might be able to find one on the flea market for less but it's probably going to be damaged i'd recommend you just get it straight from the trader in this instance the first time i want to talk about is the ak zenit b30 handguard uh, b-31s upper handguard rail you can actually get this from a barter for mechanic for three ram sticks it's an absolutely phenomenal handguard and it's definitely worth the barter that's going to open us up to go ahead and get our foregrip on, which is going to be an RK4 once again, as well as our tactical device, which we have the Balder Pro once again on this AKM. Those are going to be standards for the whole level two series. At the end of the rifle, we're going to go ahead and slot on the tactical Tula muzzle adapter and then follow it up with the DTK muzzle brake. Super cheap options that are really going to reduce the amount of recoil we have on this build. Then we're going to go ahead and slot on the Gen M3 magazines. Now these aren't windowed. You unlock windowed later on, but they are the best magazines you can use at level 2 traders. We're then going to go ahead and follow it up with the AK Tapco Saw Pistol Grip. Gives a lot of ergonomics and it's super cheap. And then for the stock, we're actually going to go ahead and use the PT adapter, then the PT1 stock, and now you can actually put a rubber butt pad over the top of this stock. Now don't worry, this is still the best stock you can use if you don't have the rubber butt pad as it is going to be locked behind a quest. It's not worth spending like 50k on the flea market to buy this. Just go ahead and slot this on as soon as you have that quest completed. 
Up next, we're going to go ahead and get rid of the rear sight so we can go ahead and slot on that Bastion. It gives a really good stats. It's going to set us up to put an optic on this bad boy. And then finally, I went ahead and threw on a, a flip up holographic sight again. Once again, personal preference. However, I will say that you're not going to be tapping as much with this rifle, in my opinion. So you could even just run like a Monstrum would be really nice or just a 1x. However, maybe you're doing your early shoreline quest and you have to get your AKM kills on scavs outside the resort then you might want to go ahead and put something like a 3x or a 4x on but this is my completed akm build with level 2 traders once again just type exclamation point level 2 akm in my twitch chat or join the discord and it'll be in the weapon build channel if you want the full list now last up is going to be like our cqb option of choice in my opinion it has really low recoil and has a big caliber inside of it there's just some caveats with this build and that is being that ammunition for 545 is hard to get right now the best you can really buy is PS. You can't even buy PP on the flea market, which isn't particularly the great round. So what you're going to want to do is make sure you're going ahead and looting those 545 boxes. They spawn all over. You'll find BT, BP, BS. And you can easily sustain using this weapon, but you need to make sure you're looting those. Those spawn like up in Stronghold underneath the, the PKMs and in the open green boxes and lootable green boxes you're going to find all around the map. And as long as you're looting those, you're going to be able to run high tier ammunition. There's no problem. Now, you can run PS ammo in this, but it's not going to hit quite as hard if you didn't. And I also recommend using this build if you're going to be doing perhaps nighttime runs. You're going to be going somewhere super close quarters, like let's say dorms on customs. This will do you a lot of justice. And that's going to be the 74 UB. And it's a little bit of a, a bonus tip for making it to the end of the video. The 74 UB actually has less recoil than all the other variations of the baby AK. And you're getting a free suppressor when you buy it. So all the more reason to use the 74 UB. Now the 74 UB is purchasable at proper level one for 70,000 rubles. There is a barter trade, but at the time of recording this, it's not very good. It will become pretty viable here shortly when prices go down, maybe in a couple days, maybe in a week. You should be able to get the UB for more around like 40K to 45K. So keep your eyes out for that. First and foremost, we're going to go ahead and slot on the AK-74U CAA XRSU 47SU Tactical Handguard. <laughs> That's a mouthful right there. There are other handguard options, but they have issues running the suppressor that came with this build. And to keep costs down, it's in our favor to just go ahead and use this handguard. On the same token as we did with the AKM, we're going to go ahead and use a PT adapter, a PT1, as well as the rubber butt pad that ties everything together nicely here. If you have just the rubber butt pad unlocked as well, to keep costs down this build, you could additionally just throw a rubber butt pad over the wire stock. Up next, we're going to go ahead and slot on a AK Tapco SKS saw style pistol grip. But once again, we've gone with the tan variation here. If you guys remember the video I just released on the best kit, if you go ahead and make like small changes to your kits to make them look stupider, but actually be just as efficient, for example, using tan here instead of black, it makes your gun look a lot dumber and people actually will pick it up less. I shit you not. So we went with tan in this instance. You can do the same thing with the AKM if you will. I just don't think it makes as big of a deal because the wooden furniture and the tan pistol grip really ties this thing together, making it look stupid. A wire stock would also do the same. On that same token, we're going to go ahead and slap on an RK4 as a forward grip, as well as a balder for our tactical device. And to round this out, I go ahead and put a Monstrum on it. So I like to take some like, you know, short to medium range engagements. And I did say this is our close quarters weapon. It is our close quarters weapon, but I'm going to be point firing a lot in close quarters. If you like ADSing in close quarters more, you might want to slot on a 1x of your choice, but this rounds out all five weapons I recommend you guys use with level two traders, guys. Hopefully this video is helpful. These take a lot of time to produce as well as edit. We're talking probably like 10 to 20 hours, so I really hope you guys appreciate it. If there's things you'd like to see different in this video, let me know. I'm all for constructive criticism so I can make this video better for you guys. And let's talk about some runners up here. Some notable mentions to this weapon build was the ADAR. It feels really good historically in the past. However, now that fully automatic 556 is very viable as well as burst fire through the G36, it just feels like it's lost this niche. With the SKS also being so cheap and having a, a stronger caliber tied behind it, that just seemed like the no-brainer DMR of choice. Historically, I've liked the RFB a lot early game, but right now the ammunition for it is kind of tied up really high in levels. The early game ammunition for 308 just doesn't feel very good, but once you go ahead and unlock M80 ammunition, it really opens up all sorts of weapons for you to use in that 308 caliber. But you're going to need level 3 Peacekeeper, as well as do Revision Lighthouse quest to unlock that caliber. And then I did think about using the AK-12 as it has a burst fire feature. It also has an extremely high rate of fire, the highest rate of fire of any 545 AK. However, 
it struggles with the same issue that the baby AK has. If you couple the issues, you have to go ahead and farm the ammunition you're going to be using in that weapon and couple that with its high rate of fire and the need for more magazines and higher capacity magazines. It's just kind of hard to sustain that ammunition. And if people don't know where to find this ammunition, it was hard for me to recommend to use the AK-12 because then I'd just be telling them to go loot all the time, go scav all the time. And that's not an efficient use of their time. So that's why the AK-12 did not make it. Historically as well, I liked semi-automatic shotguns a lot, but shotguns are just very inconsistent right now. It seems like they nerfed them really hard and in anticipation for these armor changes because they thought they were going to be overpowered. And they seem to be a little bit over nerfed right now. Now, sure, I've still been like absolutely once out by them from too far away, but just consistently they just don't deliver and you really don't know what to expect when you're shooting someone from just about any range of the shotgun right now and that is how we got to these top five weapons for the level two weapon builds hopefully you guys enjoyed this video make sure to smash that dislike button and tell me to kill myself in the comments down below i look forward to seeing you guys in the discord as well as the stream if you haven't seen the best keybinds you can be running i'll have that on screen right now and let me know if you guys want to see level 3 weapon builds in the comments down below. Peace out, guys.